So I changed the cat class from the previous video. I took out the number of lives and now I have this parameterless constructor which basically traces itself, shows that yes, the constructor was invoked. And I also added this heart object. And if I scroll up here, you'll see that a heart uh, in this example is pretty straightforward. It just tracks the number of beats that it has left. And then um, two constructors, one, the parameterless one, it traces itself and it initializes num beats left to zero. Um, the other constructor heart int num beats traces itself again but also prints the value that is passed to the constructor here. So thus we can differentiate between this constructor and this constructor by whether there's a value here between the parentheses. And then it takes that value passed in the initialization value and assigns it to num beats left. So hopefully this isn't too, too out of the ordinary. It should be straightforward. A um, little side note, can you think of a way to combine this constructor and this constructor together in one constructor? Maybe if I remember, I'll show you at the end of the video. I'll, if, if I remember to do so, I'll show you at the end of the video how to do that. But for now, this is what I want for our example. Now, cat here has heart. And in order to create a, a cat, I have to create a heart. So which constructor do you think that this heart will run. Will it run the one with, that takes an argument or the one that doesn't? Pause the video and think. Well, since I'm not passing any arguments anywhere to this hard object, it's going to run the parameterless one. Let me run that. Control F5. You see here that the heart constructor ran the parameterless one and then the cat constructor ran. Now notice the heart ran before the cat. Part of creating a cat is to create all the pieces inside of it initialize all the pieces, so to say, and so the heart constructor executes first. All right, and that actually goes along with what we're about to do in this video. Um, but but f in the meantime, let me, let, me, let me show you a few things. First of all, this is great that we're able to initialize heart, but num beats left is zero. Now, I don't know about you, but I sure hope my heart has more than one beat or zero beats left. Okay, just kidding. Do you think I died? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm still alive. Anyway, yeah, I hope I have more than one beat left. So what I'd rather do here with the, the cat is instead of relying on the zero value to actually send a value in right here. So you may think that, you know, let's give the kitty, that should probably be enough beats for a while. Let's give the kitty that many beats, but C++ doesn't like that. Expected a type of a specifier. Essentially, what this is out here is this is where we declare, you know, set up our our uh, structure of our class, but it's not actually code that executes. Okay, code that executes are these functions. These, in this case, is a constructor, but it's still a function. This executes. All right, so I actually have to move this initialization into the initializer list. So now I'm going to go like this: heart one two three four five. All right. Now, before I even do that initialization, though, watch this. Watch this. Let me show you why this is this is actually kind of kind of good. If if I didn't know about initializer lists, another way to initialize num beats left to a different value is to say heart gets and then run the heart constructor again and we'll just go up to five there. All right, but watch, watch the output when I run, I run this. I'm going to build this. You see here, we have the heart constructor run, the parameterless one, then the cat, but then inside the cat constructor, we run the heart constructor a second time. All right. In fact, this first time of running the heart constructor is useless because pretty much we're we're overriding it, we're initializing it right here. Anything that that this previous constructor did, we're gonna we're gonna redo right here. Well, that's a waste, right? But when I use the initializer list, heart one two three four five, <clears throat> what happens is. Remember, this heart constructor runs before the cat, but part of the initializing the cat is initializing its data members. So you can kind of think of as right here, yeah, we're about to enter the constructor, but first we've got to run everything in the initializer list to initialize. And since we're explicitly initializing heart here with a number argument, notice the change in the output. We no longer need to rely on the parameterless constructor. Instead, we do one initialization, it's the initialization we want to do, and, and, and then we can get into the body of the cat constructor, okay? So that's, that's one reason why to use the, 
the initializer list. And with primitives, like I showed in the previous video, I think primitives are a waste. But but to avoid this double initialization problem, this is very good. One of the you know, and I'm not going to I'm not going to get into the debate of strings and what strings are better. There's several versions of string classes, but we'll just use the built-in one. I'm going to say string here, and then I'm going to say using std string. And then say uh, my heart, or let's let's go cat. We'll keep it easy, cat. Say my cat had a name, all right? Well, what this is going to do is run the default parameter list constructor for string, which is going to set up some underlying arrays and do some some overhead and yada yada yada. Just some extra work that we're, if we really don't need to waste our time on it, why are we wasting our time on it? Because down here, I might want my cat to have a name. This could come through as a constructor argument, but I'm just going to hard code it here. I name my cats the same as me. No, I don't. Let's let's name it the name of the cat that I used to have as a kid. All right. So here's that double initialization problem. It's a little bit more expensive here. We initialize a string, and if we go look at the constructor and all the stuff inside here, we'd we'd see a good amount of code. But then we turn around and say, well, let's assign it to bref, which is going to cause it to do some some internal work and kind of undo the stuff that the parameterless constructor did. So instead, what I would be better to do is say name. You notice. Uh, the, uh, I know these arguments here in the IntelliSense is kind of hard to watch, follow, but basically it takes a character pointer, which means I can pass a string literal here, and then I can avoid that double initialization problem with a string. Okay, now I do remember, uh, that that's the end of the video, but I do remember that um, I want to show you how to combine these two constructors into one. Um, it's real simple. I could just set this to zero, a default parameter for the first argument. And now num beats will be zero if, if the client to this heart class doesn't pass anything, num beats will be zero. And so that accomplishes the same as this thing, so I can get rid of that. Alright, end of video.